vitamin B is abstaining from stealing, abstaining from sexual misconduct, abstaining from intoxicating drinks and drugs. These are the things that we can discipline our body or action. Then we discipline our speech, verbal behavior. Little by little, we can go forward, abstaining from foolish speech, abstaining from harsh words, abstaining from useless words, abstaining from malicious words. This is the discipline in our speech. We abstain from these negative actions from our life. This is not to do any evil, physically or verbally. Then, Kusala Supasambada, practicing good deeds. Dear children, I think you know the three meritorious deeds in Buddhism. Have you heard it? When you're listening to Dhamma, Bhante has explained. The three meritorious deeds in Buddhism, what the Buddha explained? Dana, Sila, and Bhavana. Practicing generosity, practicing virtue or moral conduct, and practicing meditation or mental culture. Okay, dear children, do you remember it? Three meritorious deeds in Buddhism? Dana in Pali language, Dana means generosity, sharing something with others. It's the very first meritorious deed that we can practice to purify our mind. The second one is Sila. Sila means virtue or moral conduct, discipline in our speech and behavior. Sila. The third meritorious deed is meditation. For mental culture, especially practicing loving kindness meditation. As the result of listening to what the Buddha taught, we practice these three things as um, Kusala Sopa Sampada, practicing good deeds. Why do we need to do these activities? Buddha says these meritorious deeds. Um, in his words in Pali, Kitta Lankaran, Kitta Parikaran. Practicing three meritorious means decorating our mind, giving gifts to our mind, giving food for our mind. That is why we should need to practice these meritorious deeds. Hmm? You know, we usually do many things to decorate our body, our clothes, hmm? our form, our vehicle, we do a lot of things to decorate, but we don't care about our mind. Buddhism emphasizes the importance of decorating our mind. This is the way how we can decorate our mind. Kusala Supasambada. You know, when you offer something to others, when you worship your parents, when you take care of someone, when you help someone, then your mind is so pure and calm. Your mind has no negative thoughts at the moment. Then you can see the beauty of your life. That is why we need to do the good deeds in our daily life. The third one, Sajitta Pariyodhapana. It has a deep meaning. Cleans our mind. Purify our mind. How do we purify our mind? By practicing meditation. Meditation can be divided into two. Dear children, do you know there are two meditation techniques in Buddhism? One of them is Samatha Bhavana. Samatha Bhavana means concentration meditation. The second one is Vipassana Bhavana, insight meditation, reflecting on impermanence. The concentration meditation means 
focus in our mind in the present moment and contemplate in a spiritual meditation technique or meditation or bhavana kamatthan. And also vipassana bhavana means we contemplate on the world reality as it is in permanence every moment my mind changes, my body also changes. That belongs to inside meditation of Vipassana Bhavana. Etang buddhana sasanam. This is the message of the Buddha. You know our present Buddha's name? In this dispensation, our Buddha's meaning name is Gautama or Gautama. This message is not only our Gautama Buddha, but all the Buddhas who appeared in the past who will appear in the future. All the Buddhas explain this poem, stanza, gatha in the same way. Therefore, dear children, you should learn by heart this stanza. That is very important. This is a very powerful gatha, stanza, verse or poem in Buddhism. Let's repeat it. Sambha papas akaranam kusalas upasampada sachinte pareyo dapanam etang mudhan sasanam Again, Sachinte Pariyo Dapanam. Again, Sambe Papas Akaranam. Puselas Upesampadam. Sachinte Pariyo Dapanam. Etang Buddhan Sasanam. Again, please. Sambe Papas Akaranam. Puselas Upesampadam. Sachit Pariyo Dapanam. Etang Bundhan Sasanam. The meaning of this tense is that Sabha Papa Sakaranam, not to do any evil, physically or verbally. Kusala Sopa Sampada, practicing good deeds as generosity, virtue, and metta bhavana, loving kindness meditation. Sakitta Pariyo Dapanang, purifying one's mind. Etang Buddhahan Sasanam. This is the message of the all Buddhas who appear in this world. Dear children, if you can learn and remember and learn by heart, this tense it means you have 75 marks in this lesson, in this sermon. Okay, be sure. I kindly invite you to learn by heart this is Tensa, having help from your parents and Bantes. Okay, dear children, I wish you all the best. Now we are going to our next part of this sermon. The topic is, as you know, Buddhist GPA, great point average, Buddhist IQ, Buddhist intelligent quotient, Buddhist EQ, or Buddhist emotional intelligence or emotional quotient. And finally, I will explain Buddhist SMS. It means slowly, mindfully, silently. If we want to see the beauty of our life, our mind should be calm and quiet. 
then we gradually become the SMS. We receive a SMS to our cell phone. What is that? Slowly, mindfully, silently. When we understand our life and the world, we do everything slowly, mindfully, and silently. This is the nature of our real happiness, inner peace, supreme happiness, what the Buddha explained. Okay, dear children, friends in Dhamma, now I am going to explain Buddhist GPA, great point average, little by little. It means the Buddhist education. What is the highest Buddhist education? It means Samma Ditti or right understanding. Right understanding is the Buddhist great point average. Right understanding means how we see the world. What is the reality in this world? What is the highest understanding, knowledge that we can gain throughout listening to Dhamma with the association of good friendship. Here it is very important to understand from the beginning to end, Buddha has explained we should have four qualities that we should achieve and gain and develop day by day. You have to remember those four facts, four things, what they are, Kalyana Mitta, associate in good friends, the first one. The second one, Saddhamma Savana, listening to Dhamma. The third one is Yoniso Manasakara, wise consideration or wise reflection. And fourth one is Patipada or practice. These four qualities we should gain and develop from beginning to end on the path of liberation. What they are? Associating good friends, listening to Dhamma, wise consideration, and practice. Here we are talking about Buddhist GPA. Buddhist GPA means the highest knowledge that we can gain throughout listening to Dhamma, but the Supreme Buddha explained for 45 years with his supramundane knowledge. You know, Bodhisattva, the Siddhartha Bodhisattva attained enlightenment under the Bodhi tree in Bodh Gaya, India. He realized the world. He understood what the world is and his knowledge belongs to this GPA great point average. This is said in Buddhism as Samma Ditti or right understanding. The blessed one says Samma Ditti or right understanding can be divided into two. What they are, dear children, be aware of what you are hearing here, what you are listening to here. End of the sermon, I will ask you. Now you are learning Buddhist GPA, Buddhist Great Point Average. As a Buddhist, not only as a Buddhist, but a very wise person, you can learn in this world the highest knowledge is that mm, Samma did your right understanding. The very first stage of right understanding is that. Mm, Understanding the karmic law. Understanding the karmic law, this is an eternal truth in this world. What is the meaning of samaditi in Kamma Sakata Samaditi? The knowledge of karma means whatever we do with intention, physically, verbally, or mentally, we will have the same results. This is an eternal truth. When our mind is polluted, then our actions are 
impure, then results are impure and negative. When our mind is pure, then our activities are correct and results are fruitful. This is the first understanding, first knowledge, the first step of Buddhist education that you can gain throughout listening to Dhamma, what the exalted one explained. Dear children, now you know the first part of GPA grade point average, the understanding of the karmic law. Okay, my dear children, can you remember the first part of the GPA? Understanding the karmic law. Whatever we do with intention, we will have the same results. When mind is polluted, then results are negative. When mind is pure, the results are fruitful or good, positive. What is the second understanding of the GPA? What is education? Dear children, you are so wise. Don't worry, you can understand this reality. In Buddha's time, there were some children who were at the age of seven. They could attain the very first stage of liberation, Sotapanna, stream entry. Not only in the Buddha's period, now even present world, I think sometimes you have seen there are some children at the age of four or five. They explain the very deep topics in Buddhism. You are also very wise, I know. You can learn very well and you have good friendship. Your parents always encourage you. You can study very well. You have language skills. Therefore, you are able to understand what the Buddha taught. Okay? The second part of the Buddhist GPA or Samadhi it is that um, understanding the Four Noble Truth. Understanding the Four Noble Truths is the second part of Buddhist GPA, great point average. What is the first part of Buddhist GPA? Understanding the karmic law. What is the second part of Buddhist GPA? Understanding the four noble truths. Or understanding the dependent origination of the Sampada or understanding the Panchaskanda of five aggregates. Okay, dear children, now you can increase your education, knowledge, little by little, you are so fortunate. First of all, we learned the Buddhist GPA, the first part of Buddhist GPA is that hmm, understanding the karmic law. The second, Part of Buddhist GPA is that hmm, understanding the Four Noble Truths, hmm, which is the heart of Buddhism. As Buddhists, the highest knowledge we can gain is that hmm, understanding the Four Noble Truths. Hmm. If we can understand one truth, it helps us to understand other three Noble Truths too. What is the Noble Truth of Suffering? I think you have heard Jati Vidukha, Jara Vidukha, Vyadi Vidukho, Maranam Vidukha, like that. Aging is suffering, sickness is suffering, death is suffering, separation from beloved ones is suffering, associating with what, do, what we don't like is suffering. These are the suffering in the very primary level. But when we go to the deeper level, Buddha explains the noble truth of suffering. It means, dear children, when we have experienced something, we get experience through our six senses, through our eye, through our nose, through our ear, 
through our tongue, through our body, through our mind, we get some experience from outside. When we see something, when we hear something, when we smell something, when we taste something, when we touch something, the very first experience is that um, the noble truth of suffering. The very first experience is very instant. That is the result of our previous action. That arises and ceases very soon. And when we understand something, you know, dear children, please carefully, please pay your attention to this message. When our internal senses contact something, that very first experience belongs to the noble truth of suffering. But it is very instant and it ceases very soon. And when we recognize something, we understand something through our mind after the first experience has ceased. If we have no clear understanding about this pattern, we think just now I see something, I hear something, I smell something, but this is not the reality. The truth, the reality is that mm, when we see something and when we recognize something, seeing something, the very first experience has all this is. We experience something not our not with our eye consciousness, but through our mind consciousness. If we have this understanding, we know very well. If I am ignorant in this reality, my mind is fixed in outside, then I have attachment or detachment. I have desire or hatred because of this ignorance. This understanding belongs to Buddhist great point average. I think, dear children, you can listen to this message again. I will send you the recording. Then again and again, you can listen to this message and you can increase your knowledge by listening to Dhamma again and again. Very first experience belongs to Dukkha Satcha, the noble truth of suffering. And also, if we don't have this understanding, we create new karma. That says Buddhism as avidya pachya sankhara, because of ignorance or delusion, mental formations arise. We are in the samsaric circle. If someone has this understanding, he doesn't create mental formations which consist with mm, ignorance. Mental formations are not bad, but we usually create mental formations with ignorance, delusion, avidya. That is the fault. That is the cause of suffering. That should be realized. Buddha says the first noble truth, the noble truth of suffering should be realized. When we understand this reality, automatically we can overcome attachment or desire, greed. When we can overcome greed, automatically anger, ill will, or detachment ceases. Dear children, we are discussing Buddhist GPA, Buddhist Great Point Average, understanding of the karmic law and understanding the Four Noble Truths. The first Noble Truth is Dukkha Satche, the Noble Truth of suffering, arise in five aggregates. Aggregates means the foundation of our life, Rupa, 
वेदना संज्ञा संकार विज्ञान रूप मीन्स फॉर्म्स वेदना फीलिंग संज्ञा परसेप्शन संकार मेंटल फॉर्मेशन एंड विज्ञान कॉन्सियसनेस These five things arise together, but these things are invisible. I think, dear children, you have seen icebergs in the ocean. Sometimes you have seen icebergs. When we see the icebergs, we can see only few things out of the water, but in the deep level, there are a lot of things in the. iceberg our life also like that the invisible thing in our life is that the five aggregates rupa vedana sanya sankhar vijnana but we see only few things we can see our physical body we can hear something these are the very few things in our life but the foundation of our life is that five aggregates understanding the four noble truth Five aggregates and the dependent origination are interrelated. In this situation, the more you understand this reality, the more you can increase your great point average in Buddhism. For that, you have to listening to Dhamma again and again by associating bhantes, by listening to Dhamma, having advice from your. Parents, you can increase your Dharma knowledge. Then you can increase your great point average in Buddhism. Okay, dear children. Now we are going to next part, Buddhist IQ. When we have this understanding, we will explain the discourse of Abhijja. The discourse of of Abhijja, we will explain. the highest qualities that a person can develop in this world are samatha and vipassana they are concentration and insight meditation i think you are wise children if you want to increase your iq or intelligence quotient if you respect the buddha if you confident in the supreme buddha if you are faith in the blessed one you have to increase the duration of practice in concentration and insight meditation in your day to day life the children we explain buddha explained the path that we can gain the happiness our happiness completely depends on the duration of practice in concentration and insight meditation what is the concentration meditation using a meditation technique if we are able to focus our mind in the present moment with a positive thought such as breathing meditation loving kindness meditation these are the techniques that we can use to concentrate our mind and increase our iq or intelligence quotient at the beginning you can practice it in meditation for 5 minutes per day then little by little you can increase the duration then you can practice meditation for 10 minutes 15 minutes and 20 minutes next you can increase it until 30 minutes one never like that so in your eyes you contemplate on that may all beings be well happy and peaceful may all beings be well happy and peaceful that is the way how to practice loving kindness meditation on the other side you can practice buddha anusati bhavana my spiritual teacher the lord buddha such in the exalted one arahang worthy 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 like that samma sambuddho supremely enlightened supremely enlightened supremely enlightened vijaya charana sampanno endowed with knowledge and conduct 
endowed with knowledge and conduct like that one by one qualities of the buddha we can contemplate on and we can increase the duration of practicing concentration meditation for our inner peace which is the main purpose of everyone who was born in this world this is the first part of buddhist iq or intelligent portion the second part of buddhist iq is that um, practicing insight meditation or vipassana bhavana dear children what is the vipassana bhavana or insight meditation that buddha has explained insight meditation means reflecting on impermanence impermanence has a very special meaning in buddhism usually i if i ask you dear children what is the meaning of impermanence you suddenly may say that mm, one day if something changes that is impermanence that is also one of the characteristics of impermanence but it is not the real meaning about anicca or impermanence what the buddha taught impermanence means i will give you an example okay when i do this sound okay you can hear this sound this sound that you heard didn't come from the present from the past this sound will not go to future from the present this sound arises at the moment at and immediately it ceases this is the example of impermanence or anicca what the blessed one explained when some reasons arise the result arises when those reasons cease the result automatically ceases cause and effect causality this is the foundation of the dependent origination what is some part the the heart of buddhism our i is impermanent with the says i is impermanent means this i the ability of seeing arises at the moment when we look at something the forms arise at the moment according to our ability of seeing the form arises at the moment i consciousness also arises at the moment with the conditions everything in this world arises and ceases at the moment according to reasons when reasons together when reasons are together the result arises when conditions or reasons cease the result ceases at the moment this is the understanding this is the reflecting that we should do to increase our iq practicing impermanence or reflecting on impermanence or anicca what the blessed one explained how do you practice inside meditation when you see something if you can understand my i arises at the moment forms arise at the moment i consciousness arises at the moment everything is impermanent everything arises and ceases at the moment finally my entire life is the present moment the present thought that present thought arises and ceases at the moment if you are able to contemplate on your present moment the present thought reflecting on impermanence contemplating on arising and ceasing of the present thought it means you are in vipassana bhavana inside meditation dear children your spirituality your spiritual life your value of life completely depends on the duration of reflecting on this impermanence this is the highest way that we can gain the value of our life 
This is the way how we can increase the value of our life in this world using the knowledge of the Supreme Buddha. If we can practice this message, it means we also can gain the super knowledge, supramundane knowledge that the Buddha discovered when he attained enlightenment under, under, under the Bodhi tree in Bodhaya in India. Yes, children, this is not difficult. You have done a lot of merits in your previous lives. And that is why you have a chance to listen to what the Buddha taught. Therefore, please try to develop your concentration and insight meditation in your day-to-day -day life. Even though you are well-educated, although you are very rich, even though your physical complexion is very beautiful, if your mind is polluted with negative thoughts, everything that you earn is useless. That is why we need to practice this Dhamma. You know, in the ordinary world, many people learn something, study something, earn something, finally, they end their life with suffering. This is the nature of the world, but you should not do like that. You are the disciples of the Buddha. You are the followers of the Supreme Buddha. Our spiritual teacher, the Blessed One, explained the way how we can develop our happiness day by day. Even though we are going to all age, decay, aging, we can increase our inner peace, happiness, spiritual happiness. Buddha has pointed out very clearly how we can increase our inner peace day by day. Finally, even though we are very old age, even though we are very sick, even though we are very weak physically, but mentally, we can make a very strong mind by practicing the Dhamma, what the Buddha explained. For that, Buddhist IQ means in one side, increasing the duration of concentration meditation or Samatha Bhavana, the other one is practicing insight meditation, no vipassana bhavana, or reflecting on impermanence. Dear children, can you remember we explained Buddhist GPA? Buddhist great point average is divided into two. One of them is understanding the karmic law. The second one is understanding the four noble truths. That is the Buddhist GPA. What is the Buddhist IQ? Buddhist IQ means the duration of concentration meditation and insight meditation. The more you increase the duration of concentration and insight meditation, the more you increase your IQ or intelligent portion in Buddhism. Okay? Next, we are going to Buddhist EQ or EI or emotional intelligence. This is the highest quality of the strong personality that the new psychology has presented. Especially Professor Daniel Goldman explains the qualities of emotional intelligence. This is the place that you can see your success in your educational and your earnings. There are five qualities can be seen here. They are self-awareness, self-regulation, inner motivation, empathy, and social skills. But they are self-awareness, self-regulation, inner motivation, empathy, and social skills. You know, we can see some people who are very educated, but they have no communication skills. They have no empathy. Then we don't say that they are successful. Our success completely depends on our happiness. Our happiness depends on having these high qualities in our life. Buddha has explained very clearly how we can increase these qualities in our life, in this immediate life. You know, when we are mindful, 
with the awareness of our body and mind, then we have self-awareness or self-mindfulness. This is mindfulness. Then self-regulation. When we are mindful, we have discipline in our speech and behavior. And also inner motivation, our courage, our motivation gradually increases to practice this path, gaining knowledge, practicing Samatha and Vipassana. Then empathy, we are very sensitive because we practice loving kindness meditation. We have warm hearts, we have compassionate heart when other people are suffering. We are ready to share their problems with us and we are ready to help them. This is empathy. We pay our attention to what they say. This is the empathy. We should have empathy, especially at home, when you associate to your parents and brothers and sisters, you should have empathy. You should be very sensitive when they have some problems. Then you have a warm heart. You have generous. You have generosity. You are generous. You are compassionate. As the result of practicing this path, finally you have communication skills. You know, there are some people who have some connection through their cell phones, but they don't have real communication skills with their family members. But at home, we should talk with others pleasantly, kindly, honestly, truly. That is the nature of our social skills. When we practice mindfulness, being aware of our body and mind, we always contemplate on our body and mind. We always take care of our mind. Then we have these qualities. It means our EQ or emotional caution is very high. When we spend this life with the understanding of the karmic law and the dependent origination, practicing concentration and insight meditation, having mindfulness, and finally, our cell phone receives uh, SMS, Buddhism SMS, slowly, mindfully, silently. We always do all the activities very slowly, mindfully, and silently. This is the sign that we are in happiness, and we have a peace of mind. This is the Buddhist path that we should practice. Now I think you can understand what I explained. Buddhist great point average, Buddhist IQ or intelligent question, Buddhist emotional intelligence, and Buddhist SMS, and Buddhist and short message, which is slowly, mindfully, silently. Okay, dear children, if you have any question, now you can ask it. Dear Bhante. Yeah, okay. Yes, it's your time. Please turn on your uh, uh, microphones and then you can raise the questions. Um, Hamdara, can you repeat the list that you made? Um, self-awareness, self-regulation, what comes after that? Yes, self-awareness belongs to Buddhist emotional intelligence. Self-awareness means, in Buddhism, mindfulness. Being aware of our body and mind. When we do something, when we speak something, we should do it mindfully. Then we have no mistakes. All right, thank you. Yes, there are five qualities in emotional intelligence. According to the psychology of um, Professor Daniel Goldman presented, self-awareness, self-regulation, inner motivation, empathy, and social skills. 
when we practice mindfulness in Buddhism, our inner awareness gradually increases. When we practice virtue or moral conduct in Buddhism, then our self-regulation increases. When we know the Dhamma, when we are interested in Dhamma, when we are confident in what the Buddha taught, then our energy gradually increases. It means our inner motivation is very high. When we practice loving kindness meditation, we have empathy. We are very sensitive with others. And also, as the result of this path, we have communication skills. We talk friendly. We speak kindly. We tell something as true. We should speak kindly, truly, mindfully, and friendly. These are the qualities that we can practice according to emotional intelligence in Buddhism. Okay, dear children, any question? You will have the chance to listen to this sermon again. I will send the audio file to Bhante Sadhajiva. You can receive it from Bhante. Then you can develop your knowledge, Dharma knowledge. And you can listen to it again and again. You can develop these skills in your life. Then day by day, you can develop your inner peace, happiness. When you live in the Dharma, it means your parents are so happy. The reason is that you are healthy mentally. Buddha says, mm, there are a lot of people in this world, they are mentally ill. If we know the Dhamma, when we practice the Dhamma, we can live without mental illnesses among the people, those who are mentally ill. Buddha says, there are a lot of people in this world who are angry. When we learn the Dhamma, when we practice the Dhamma, when we gain the results through practicing Dhamma, we can live without anger among the people, those who are angry in this world. Finally, Buddha says, mm, we can spend a very spiritual life like a lotus flower, which comes from mud. You know, in the ponds, there are some lotus flowers. Mm. Those flowers don't touch water or mud. They have come out of water like that we can live like mm, lotus flowers in this ordinary society who has a lot of mental disorders and defilements in their mind. This is the path that we can achieve the real mental health. Mental health is more important than physical health. Buddhism points out the way how we achieve the real mental health. For that, I wish you all the best. By the power of the spiritual energy, may you be well, happy and peaceful. May your uh, spiritual goals and especially your educational goals meet with success. By the power of all these meritorious deeds, mm, finally, may all of us attain the final bliss of liberation. Sadhu. Sadhu, sadhu. Dukkham padanta janin dukkham. Bayam padanta janin bayam. Sokam padanta janin sokam. Unto sande pipani no. May all beings be well, happy, and peaceful. May they attain the final bliss of liberation. May the Triple Gem bless you. Sadhu, Sadhu, Sadhu. Thank you very much, Most Venerable Bhante Dhammagaru, who is spending time and his energy to give some special knowledge to our Dhamma friends, kids, uh, kids, you all, all, you also got a wonderful opportunity to listen to Bhante Dhamma Garu, to gain your knowledge and experiences. 
if you have more questions, uh, because now we spend almost one hour and 20 minutes. So I think uh, we can't go beyond that. I know your nature, you like to stay only 20, 40 minutes, but we, we go beyond that. So if you have any questions, you can uh, uh, send us through emails, then I can forward to Bhante Dhammagaru, then we can discuss in another time. Uh, thank you very much. So we- I'd like to pay my gratitude and thanks for the children. Dear children, you paid your attention to listening to Dhamma. I really appreciate it. That says your skills, I, uh, that is skills, uh, the honor of those skills go to your parents too. The honor go to your parents too, okay? I really appreciate your participation. I saw some children have uh, written something, very special points you wrote down. Then you can read it later and you can increase your knowledge. And especially I will send the audio file to Bante Sadajeva. Then you can listen to it again. If you have any mistake that you couldn't listen in, then you can listen in it again and again. You can clean your knowledge, improve knowledge, and you can practice this valuable message, the Dhamma, what the Buddha explained in this immediate life, and you can see the results and you can increase your inner peace day by day. Okay, thank you again for everyone. Thank you, Andruni. Thank you, kids. Then have a wonderful day for you all. Enjoy wonderful evening. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.